Welcome to Surrey, home to prestige pawnbrokers. We'll look at almost anything of value. Handbags, fine wine, art, antiques, jewellery, watches, cars. Here in one of Britain's most well-heeled areas... What can I say? Clients pawn their luxury possessions in exchange for much-needed cash. We think maybe 45,000. This is outrageous. With unique insight into this most unusual business. We've got my life in here. Blimey. This week we'll see big loans. Don't think you'll have any problems getting 90 grand for that. On some spectacular items. <laughs> and learn what happens <laughs> when you can't repay your debt. We can't give you your watches back. <laughs> Did you hear that? Welcome to the world of posh porn. In the 1950s, there were around 50 pawn shops in the UK. Now there's over 2,000. Wow, I just love it. Every minute of it. <laughs> Since the recession, we've seen a real boom in pawnbroking. Our clients are using our service in the same way they would have used a bank. Good afternoon, how are you? What have you got for me? Two rings. Good afternoon. And people from all walks of life come through the doors. Jesus. There is no Dickensian feel about it. The business is opening up. It's fantastic. Um, how much are you looking for? Uh, that was 8,000. Weybridge is home to Surrey's Glitterati, as well as a pawn shop that specialises in loaning against the locals' luxury goods. Good morning, Prestige. We have a lot of wealthy clients. They have luxury cars, yachts, etc. But well, the one thing they sometimes lack is cash. The brainchild of millionaire James Constantino... Do you know what this is? No. It's your lunch. <laughs> he and his team regularly loan six-figure sums. No, they're probably about 180 grand, something like that. And here are some extraordinary tales. It was for somebody in the royal family. Are you allowed to name them? No. So my gut feeling is it's doodah. <laughs> Prior to here, I did holistic therapy, which is massage. Now my friends go and say, oh, she, she does massage and she works in porn. The typical porn shop customer comes in off the high street, but when you deal in high-end goods, some items are too large to carry. So it's a Lamborghini. Do you know what sort of value the car's got? 120. We'll see what the value is and give you a call back if that's OK. Well, that was um, a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider, which is a really, really sexy car. That is a work of art. That's not just a car, is it? Joe, what do you think of that? It looks stupid. That'd be ridiculous. I'd rather a little baseball beat on myself. That's the vegetarian in you coming out. What's that coming out in you, if you want that? That's a little willy syndrome. <laughs> What they say about men no, with cars Who like says that? that? Us women. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing in the Lamborghini is 27-year-old local lad Alan, who bought it for £180,000. That's John Terry's Bentley, outside Mr Jamie Redknapp's house. I know every area does have their rich and poor, uh, but I think Weybridge does take it to another level. It can't beat that noise. From his girlfriend's mum's house, Alan is building a motoring empire. Um, yeah, I've just sent you one that I've got coming through. I think it lands on the 12th at the dealer. Black with black, memory, pano, keyless and intelli light. I'd really want to draw a grand on it minimum, wouldn't I? I'm very money motivated, so I'm always busy. Pretty lucky you've actually managed to grab me for, for a couple of hours today, to be honest. Alan runs a business hiring upmarket vehicles to people who want to keep up with their wealthy neighbours. We are mainly concentrating on the, the higher end of the market, such as the Mercedes, the Lamborghini. We've had a number of Ferraris. Supercar stock doesn't come cheap, so to buy more vehicles, Alan plans to pawn the jewel in his motoring crown. I'm trying to get it nice and clean for, for prestige, because I might be able to nick a couple more quid out of them if it's a bit cleaner. This one I do use personally quite a lot. It's uh, very flash. Girlfriend absolutely loves it. And when the sun does come out, there's nothing better than driving a, a top-down Lamborghini, really. You can take it to Tesco's and you can also thrash the hell out of it. The 
money's just going to help us tie over for the next month or two. I don't know what we'd do without it. So the banks can take a very long time to process your application. About 100,000 would be where I need to be. I reckon my negotiation skills might come in handy and I uh, might be able to get him up to that 100,000 mark. So will Alan get the six figure sum he needs when he brings his car to the pawn shop? Loaning against supercars is everyday business in a luxury pawnbroker's. Good afternoon, Prestige. But their doors are also open to the weird and the wonderful. I don't know what it is. I haven't got a clue. It's actually beautiful. A couple of old military maps. Doesn't mean a lot to me, I must say, but... They look nice, though. We've had Adolf Hitler's supposedly armband with some DNA on it. Not sure if that was his bloodstains or a pair of his underpants. <laughs> Mine furious skid marks. <laughs> Last week, I had a lady come in and she actually wanted to inquire about uh, scrapping her gold teeth. And I said, yeah, we'd look at them, <laughs> but fortunately she never came back. And today, the shop has received another intriguing inquiry. Thank you. Bye. Guess what that inquiry was? OK, what was it? A lady called Hetty, who was married to a Ken Russell. What, the Ken Russell? Ken Russell, yeah. Oh, blimey. <laughs> Rabbits, Louie Dog. Louie Dog. Back in the 1990s, Hetty was the third of four wives of British film director Ken Russell. In my mid 30s, I met Ken Russell on a film. He completely swept me off my feet. He was just extraordinary and brilliant and funny and just amazing. I fell completely in love with him. When Ken died, he left all of his estate to Lisi, his fourth wife but Hetty believes her past can still help pay for her future. I'm waiting for my book deal to go through for my autobiography, my life with Ken Russell, the enfant terrible, and uh, hopefully soon, but I don't know how long. With no book deal in place, Hetty needs funds to get by. What do you think, Louis? Ooh, shall I, shall I pawn you, Louis? Ooh, pawn dog. She hopes she can pawn personal items from her career and marriage. We've got my life in here. Ta da My life! Ah! So much stuff! My treasures, my memories, my amazing life I've had. Pawning personal keepsakes is an unusual step. Ooh. Will Hetty be offered <laughs> anything for her mementos? <laughs> Obviously, these things for me, that they're, they're priceless. So it's, it's very difficult to pitch that in the marketplace. How much they're worth? I haven't a clue. Standing between the jobbing actress and possible untold riches is Lawrence. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye, then. Right, do you know how to tell those are real or not? Well, you bite it. <laughs> Part of the reason James actually hired me is I'm sort of the shop eye candy. The ankle chains mm. um, were very yeah. massive, yes, but they were right. actually worn by prostitutes. So I obviously relaxed on him straight away when they see my sort of ad noise figure, and obviously I work out quite considerably down the gym every night. The friendly face of the pawn shop and one of the most experienced members of staff, he's been dispatched to value Hetty's collection of personal photos. <laughs> oh, Louis dog. Hello. Hello. I'm Lawrence. Hello, Lawrence. Whoops. Nice How to meet you. you. Nice to meet you. Good Come in. Me. Would you like a piece of cake, Lawrence? Not quite now, but I've all looked like I have a bit of a muck for sponge. Where should we start? There's so much. That's the, some of the wedding. It's our son Rex. It looks lovely. So, um, there's loads more photographs. As you can see, there's like millions of them. I was very uncomfortable because to me, some things a taboo. They're very, very personal, but also you've got to think what value have they got to anyone else but the person or the people who are in the photographs. And here we have... It's not the original wedding cake, is it? Personal <laughs> wedding cake. Blimey. I was panicking. I was hoping, please, please, please bring something else to the table. Luckily, she did have one little thing up her sleeve. This is the Fontaine dress. 
That's um, quite that. I thought it was possibly Romeo and Juliet, but in fact, it's Swan Lake. It's in two well, parts. It's a classic one, isn't it? Yeah. Lawrence's attention is piqued by a costume that once belonged to ballet legend Margot Fontaine. And it's got her name. Oh, wonderful. So that verifies it. Fontaine Brilliant. prologue. It is a really unique item. Well, the, the item that has to stand out is the Margot Fontaine ballet outfit. That is the absolute pride there, and that's where most of the money will come from. Have you got an idea of the figure you're looking for? No, I'm not going to say. You're I'm not going to see say. what you come up with. Well, actually, it's always best to, to sort of give us an I'll idea. Say, I'll say it in my head. Go for as much as possible. Go see for what as you much come, as possible. Yeah. Yeah, have you got any paperwork with it? Yeah, there was an email, so we just need to get them to I probably need. resend it if I can't email. find it yet. With no official certificate of authentication, proving the provenance of this promising item might be problematic. But Lawrence isn't complaining. It's been absolutely lovely. It's to been meet you. so really lovely. lovely. Thank you very much. Mm. What a lovely, lovely lady. I really like her. It would be nice if, you know, there was a big load of cash. So, fingers crossed, yeah, hopeful. The pressure now falls on Lawrence. Can he prove any of Hetty's curious collection is worth loaning against? As pawnbrokers to Surrey's elite, James and his team are used to dealing with VIPs. But their latest customer, Hetty, the former wife of film director Ken Russell, has still managed to cause a stir. What are they like? Any good? Um, it's all very unique, because it's not something you'd see normally. The actress wants to pawn personal items from her marriage. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of family pictures. It's like the cat that got the cream can, wasn't he? So you know some women have got it, and she definitely had it. She was absolutely lovely, and she makes a terrific sponge cake as well. Well, that's always nice, isn't it? Yeah. She's so sweet. You're in love, aren't you? No, I'm not in love. You are in I love. I like her. He's a lovesick puppy, to be honest with you. That's what it seems like to me. But I don't let those things sort of interfere with my appraisal. Who would really be interested in some snapshots of his sitting around his yeah. uh, home with his kids? One item the actress hopes to pawn does intrigue. So, what do you think of that? Um, I think you look bloody ridiculous in that. It's Margot Fontaine. That's got to have a good value to it, hasn't it? Now, now, now that's of interest to me, you yeah. see. Lawrence will need evidence the dress really did belong to the famous ballerina. Proving authenticity is a big challenge for pawnbrokers. And some areas are more troublesome than most. Art could be a real nightmare. If it hasn't got provenance, we tend to keep away from it. There's so many fakes going around. Oh, wow. What do we know about that, then? If we get it wrong, we can really hurt the business. So we've really, really got to get it right. Well, you fell in love with it straight well, yeah, away, I didn't you, Jack? Well, yeah, I liked it straight away, because I like the and, colours. Um, it's turquoise. Yeah, you made your mind up using you going to have it, didn't you? Well, I like the light on the clouds. On the clouds, it's, they yeah, they seem to shine up. Two people who are confident about the origins of their artwork are Paul and Jackie. But I think she's captured the spirit of Peter Pan really well. They collect works by contemporary British painter Kerry Darlington. I love it, absolutely love it. In every painting she does, I think, is a piece of Kerry, I think. Mm, definitely. Mm. We always see that, don't we? Yes. The art aficionados are married with three children. You're not going to eat it again? Yes. Paul has been out of work for 18 months and with finances tight wants to set up a new business, which means taking dramatic measures right, see you later, give me a kiss. and parting right. with beloved see items. See ya. Bye. Be careful. Just 12 months ago, they splashed out on an original painting by their favourite artist. The vibrant colours, you can lose yourself in there. You just want to dive in there with her. It looks at you. It tells, comes, it, it, it's, it's almost as yeah, if it's coming to life. Is, exactly. And every it's time you walk up the stairs and look at her, you talk to her. This gaze does not come cheap. And the price was £25,000, and that was all my inheritance and redundancy that I'd saved. We didn't hesitate, though, really, No, did we? we didn't, we, no. We thought this is our one and only chance. chance. So we absolutely both we agreed. both agreed straight jump away. Jump with both feet and, and grab it before she changes her mind. 
we've got to make a sacrifice and um, this is a sacrifice, you know, we've, we've decided, to, we decided make. to make, really. Because the girls are now growing up and we do need to make sure that they're supported for their future. The cash-strapped couple have turned to the pawn shop who are taking their painting to a gallery for valuation. Paul finds the parting particularly painful. I didn't think it would be this difficult. I uh, didn't realise how attached I got to it, but um, obviously I have. I do uh, give one where I'm doing the right thing. But... Yeah. For Paul and Jackie, the decision to turn to the pawnbrokers has proved a tough one. But they are part of a growing number of British parents using this type of service to get hold of quick cash. Hello, how are you? Hi. Bag. It's ordinary families that we're seeing coming through the door that maybe we wouldn't have seen five or ten years ago. It was my man's yeah. and she gave it to me. Over the years we've seen a complete change in the type of clientele we get coming in. Um, now we're, we're mainly getting families and using us instead of the banks. I mean, do you know what sort of money you're looking for? I took it to Harrods and they said it ranges from 10,000 up to 24,000 pounds. I need to have it authenticated by the value. Of course, yeah, okay. definitely. We'll contact you as soon as we know. Fantastic, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Cheers, bye-bye. Thanks. And in the homes of many ordinary families, there are some extraordinary items. This ring is a present that my dad bought for my mum 20 years ago. He had a bit of a win on the horses, which enabled him to be able to afford to buy this for my mum. But he did like the horses, which my mum has put a bit of a stop to now. <laughs> um, now they've retired. Georgina's mum is happy for her and her two sisters to reap the rewards from their dad's gambling spoils. She just wants to see her daughters benefit from the money now, but we don't know how good the diamond is and how much it's going to be worth. Um, I'm a housewife, and this is my husband, Carl. He's a builder. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Good news from the pawnbrokers couldn't come at a better time for Georgina and her family. With Carl being self-employed, we can have good times and bad. As our family's grown, you know, you have to be a little bit careful. We've had to cut back on some things, yes. And the family are in need of extra help after a particularly sticky patch. This year's been a difficult year because I've had to have uh, eight months off this year. I had a football accident and basically I ruptured my patella tendon. Having him at home has been hard. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, <laughs> it has been hard. Um... I'm not the best patient. <laughs> <laughs> Ringing the bell for me. <laughs> now Carl's back on his feet, Georgina has a plan to help keep the family finances on track. She's making her first ever trip to the pawn shop. Good afternoon. Hello. How are you? What can I've I do for you today? I've spoken to you on the phone yeah. regarding this ring, which was my mother's. Jesus. Who gave it to her? Donald Trump? <laughs> this is one of the many great parts about the business. Someone walks in, they open up a box, and I've got the total wow factor. All we know is that it is five carat Five, yeah, I was, about, yeah. I was going to say between four and five, That's so five. That's all I know. Blimey. And so he wants to actually do a loan against it? We're thinking maybe if you was interested in buying the ring, we oh. possibly want... We'd definitely be interested in buying it. I mean, you got any idea of the money you're looking for? We think maybe between thirty to 45000 we think. It's a beautiful stone. Mm. Oh, okay, it makes lovely. my day when something like that comes in. <laughs> it's going to be safe with you. Okay. Believe me, we're more secure than Fort okay, Knox, probably. OK, all right, there OK, are. so I'll just wait to hear from you then. Yep, all lovely right, to meet you. you. Thank you very Look much. After yourself. Thank you, bye. It's not the sort of thing that usually excites you. Wow, that's, that's lovely. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, what is it? Five carats? Five like carats. It even looks big on my fat little hands. I wouldn't be scared to wear that. Why? Like, it's massive. Right, it's lovely. It's really nice. She's a lucky lady. But some items arouse more than professional curiosity among the staff. James has come to his lock-up garage to await young businessman Alan and the top-of-the-range supercar he hopes to pawn. 
But when James sees a higher motor, I mean, you can just see his eyes just glint over. He just gets so excited about it. It's, it's like a child. It smells nice. Yeah, it's very distinctive. And listen to this. I'd like a CD of that. I'm going to get arrested in a minute going around sniffing motor vehicles. Oh, my God, did you hear that? <laughs> That's amazing. Alan has brought in his Lamborghini and hopes to strike the best possible deal with James. How are you doing? Not bad, thank you. Yourself? Very good. Oh. Alan, this is phenomenal, isn't it? Thank you. It's, it's absolutely not bad, beautiful. Yeah. You don't see many of them in pearlescent white, but actually seeing one in the flesh, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, I believe if you're spending all that money on a car, you want to be seen, really, don't you? You don't want to sort of and, blend in with the crowd, so... And heard. Yes, well... <laughs> I'm liking the smell. It's almost new, eh? Can I have a little... Just yeah, a little of course you can. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm loving that. Just be careful you don't wake the neighbours. We don't care about the neighbours down here. What are you looking to get, Alan? How much do you want to give me? That's the, <laughs> the, the question, as much as possible. I think I'd be comfortable around 80 grand, if that gets you what you need. To be honest with you, it's slightly less than where I wanted to be. Right. Um, I was hoping to get nearer to sort of the 100. Oh, I don't think, Alan, that we're going to get to 100 grand on it. I think I'd be overstretched on the loan to value. So what about 85? How do you feel with that? Uh, 85. There's no movement at all to 90. Let me have another smell of it. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you the key if you want. <laughs> I'm just in love with it. You can have your 90 grand. Lovely. Thank you Honestly. very much. Cheers. Thank Alan. you. Thanks for bringing it Cheers. down, mate. No worries. Thank you. Well, look, from my point of view, it's uh, phenomenal to have this down here. Look at it, it's a work of art. It's automotive pornography, if you like. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I did say it was going to be the battle of the businessmen, and I think I won, hands down, actually. So um, I might even buy James a beer to say thank you, but I'm, I'm very happy. Start of a new week at the pawn shop, and for one regular customer, that means settling her debt Hello. Hello. and reclaiming her item. Um, I've come into Redeem. Yeah, eight hundred to pay. It's nice and warm. Is it nice and warm? <laughs> there it is. Yay! Oh. Okay, should be still working as well. All right, and see you soon. Thank, well, hope not to see you soon, well, but you never know. Take care. Bye. Bye. But not all transactions end so smoothly. The pawn shop loans last for up to seven months, and each week, boss James must assess all the overdue, unclaimed items. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. This one's eight months over and is um, owing us four grand. And the bad thing is the gold price has gone down as well, so that may have affected the value. Basically, we try and extend it for as long as we can, but it comes to a point where it has to be sold and we'll have to recoup our funds. And that leaves it with um, Torren, bless him. Right. He was coming in, wasn't he, almost on a weekly basis and then oh, no. just kept getting extended and extended. One customer is regularly discussed. He's nearly a year overdue on his loan against some watches and now it's Joe's job to call him into the office. You'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. No, You've got that nasty it. side of you. you just get a bit yeah, that's straight. true. Oh, bless him. I, know, I hate but... doing this. Why don't we do a little rerun of what you might say to Torrin? You pick up that phone. Let's just imagine I'm Torrin now. I'm phoning in. <coughs> I hate role play. It's cringe. Is it that is so cringe? Is that prestige? No, you've got the wrong number. <laughs> the problematic watch owner is Torrin, once a successful businessman. You always dream of having a swimming pool, don't you? Everyone wants a swimming pool. Lucky enough, this house came up and it had a swimming pool, so I bought it. <laughs> and now I can't afford it. A relationship breakup and business problems drove the removal firm owner to the pawn shop as he struggled to pay his mortgage. As soon as the housing market drops, the removal company drops because no one's moving. 
So once no one's moving, we get no work. So basically, we're in stock, really, <laughs> to be honest with you. I obviously bought quite a big house. I've had other houses. I've had nice cars and stuff as, along the way. I've had a good life until everything sort of went wrong. A recent house fire has set Torrens' finances back further. Unfortunately, I'm not insured, so I've just got to stay in it as it is. This was all completely black like that, but I cleaned it off with Mr Muscle and uh, <laughs> it came up quite well. Despite his woes, Torrens still hopes he'll be able to reclaim his pawned watches at some point. So you haven't really sold them, you've actually given them to someone and took some money off them. So basically you've got half a chance of getting them back. But I've got one, this is one of the last ones I've got now. Torren now faces a meeting with the pawn shop to discover if his debt will mean losing his precious watch collection for good. You get to a stage where you think everything's against you. You can't do anything right. You just think you're getting right and then something else happens. And then you just get over that and you get off another hurdle. It's hurdle, hurdle. You just keep going and hope, hopefully there'll be some light at the end of the tunnel. Back in Weybridge, staff member Lawrence is busy with the valuation of actress Hetty's items. But James isn't happy. Did you take the call? Yes, I did. Why didn't you get the guy's number? Well, James, all the conversations that they want to push is not what you're thinking. Every time it. someone calls up, yeah. please fill out a form because we're wasting time. Yes, I've James. now got an interested client, but all yeah. I've got is an email address to me. Yes. It isn't good enough. OK. So make sure we do that because it's yes. getting on my tips. OK. Right, all right. Hands up. OK, yeah, but that's the that's yeah. second client in a row today that we haven't got a contact for. You know, as a business, it is a bit of a roller coaster. So you've got to be on the ball all the time. You've got to be professional. At the end of the day, it's not my money, it's James's money I'm playing with. Another bone of contention between James and Lawrence is the value of Hetty's collection of personal items. James and I are pretty divided on this, and James is pretty astute. I mean, he thinks it's worth about 5K. I personally, fingers crossed, for 20K. The actress wants to pawn items from her marriage to the late film director Ken Russell. And a ballet dress that once belonged to dance star Margot Fontaine. Hetty needs cash as she awaits a deal for her autobiography. I'm not going to be insulted because there are bad consequences. There are very bad consequences. There are consequences that you will not like. I just have no idea what to expect, actually. And I don't know which item is going to be the one to be the killer item, as it were. Could be the Fontaine. Could be the Ken things. Tell your agent to give me a call. To discover exactly what Hetty's collection could fetch on the memorabilia market, Lawrence has turned to a theatrical expert in London. Hello, Kerry, how are you? Hello, nice oh. to see you. Nice Kerry see you. is an auctioneer specialising in vintage clothing. <laughs> There's a lot of memorabilia here. Obviously, photographs. Oh, yeah. Sweet. There's some lovely pictures. They are, but they're very personal pictures. Yeah, that's the only thing that worried me. I think they're priceless to the family. Yeah. Say it was someone like Marilyn Monroe or yeah. Audrey Hepburn, an actual movie star's yeah. private images. Yeah. But, you know, Ken doesn't have that kind no. of cult yeah. following. I think she'd get a lot of negative feedback oh. for literally bearing all in the auction room. I am really going to have to go for my best punch, I think, okay. here. A less contentious item that Hetty also wishes to pawn is a dress she believes once belonged to legendary ballerina Margot Fontaine. The most expensive Fontaine piece was the black tutu from Swan Lake. Oh, yeah, I can imagine so. That she danced when she danced with Nuriev. Yeah. And that made 33,000 plus premium. Blimey. So tell me what documentation what you've we have, got to support this. What we have got is an email from the Royal Opera House. OK, what we need is not an email like this which says, I believe used to work in the wardrobe department, said they thought the costume was from. Mm -hmm. We really need to have this nailed. Right. Thank you very much for your time. That's all right. <laughs> well, the pictures, they have got no intrinsic value. As for the Margot Fontaine outfit, which I always thought was the crown, if we could find some pictures of her actually wearing it, it'll take the money up. <laughs> Thank you. 
James and the team often need an expert eye to help value and prove items are what their customers say they are. Basically, one of the biggest problems behind pawnbroking is fakes. There's thousands of fakes. If we get it wrong, basically, we've lost all our money. So whether it's £100,000 or £1,000, and I don't like losing money. Today, James is visiting his art expert, Ben, to check a painting belonging to Paul and his wife, Jackie, is genuine. Hi, James. Good to see you. How are you? You're very good yourself. Yeah, good. You got the piece in, then? We do. She's over here. We've been admiring her this morning. The couple paid £25,000 for what they believe is an original by contemporary British artist Kerry Darlington. Yeah, it's stunning. It's very rare for her to paint this scale, and it's very rare for her to paint figurative work. She does about one a year, so it's quite a special piece. Right. In terms of the numbers that are out there... The last Kerry Darlington we sold, which is slightly smaller than this, yeah. was 32, 33,000. So we might be able to chip that little bit up. The value of original artwork, unlike some items James loans against, can fluctuate according to fashion. In terms of the artist's popularity at the moment, is it a sort of a growing trend? Kerry Darlington has yeah, had a fantastic journey over the last five, six years. She's gone from selling possibly eight to nine years ago works on eBay for humble figures to being one of the best-selling artists in the UK. It's a very big demand for her figures, so you get the, the right buyer and they, they will pay what's needed to acquire it. This is a good find. Fantastic. Ben, thanks Pleasure. for your time. Pleasure Thank as you. usual. Cheers, mate. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Thanks. The painting is genuine and potentially lucrative, but back at the office, James's good fortune does not last long. I've been really silly and not Hello. find a um, client. Yeah, we have got you really, here. Really I'm ever so sorry. We will get back to you. Oh, dear. Yeah, we will. Thank you. Bye. It's really bad. I feel bad because if it had been someone else, I would have absolutely yeah, gone crazy really about it. I need to talk to you about this sort of thing because there is no excuse. <laughs> you piss off. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, excuses, he's, excuses. He only phoned up this morning. Excuses, excuses. I've been busy. When you do say it, I want it done. Part of PA and operations manager Joe's job is dealing with non paying customers. Today, she's expecting a visit from watch owner Torren, whose debt is seriously overdue. The extensions that have been granted have just gone way beyond what we would normally do, and the interest owed is now more than what the loan amount was, so it's been allowed to go on far too long. What started as a £300 loan 18 months ago has grown into over £700 worth of debt. Unless Torren happens to have this, this amount, um, the items are going to start getting moved on from tomorrow morning. Hello, good afternoon. I've come to see about my watches I pulled. Torrin has taken a risk putting his items in, which it always is, because unless you know for sure that you're going to be able to get those items back, you risk losing them. Come through. Ooh. Thank you. It is annoying that I'm the one who has to do this part of it, where James has been the one saying to him, yes, all right then, mate, that's fine. <laughs> all right then, yeah, no, I understand, you know. But you don't buy a dog and then bark yourself, do you? Hi, you, Torrin. Hi, Joe. You're right. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Um, You've been dealing with James. Yes. Yeah. Basically, you were three hundred pound loan, and okay. then your interest that's accrued has outweighed the actual loan amount. You got now a seven hundred and twenty-eight pound and forty p loan amount that needs to be cleared, and it'd have to be cleared by the close of business tonight. So, I can't do basic, that. So I'm no. gonna have to. Yeah. This is where we're at. There's no more extensions that can be granted. Okay. All right. We can't obviously give you your watches back, so they're going to get sold from tomorrow onwards, um, and that's it. There is more than likely, I'd say, 99.9% .9 chance that there's going to be a deficit against this loan. We're not going to ask you for that, but. Um, so you don't reckon there'll be nothing left over out of there? No. That's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. I can't really complain any more about it, can I? Um, I appreciate you coming in, and I want to wish you all the luck, basically. I Thank really, you, Joe. I'm sorry that hasn't out. worked out better for you, and I really hope things pick up for you okay. moving well, forward. Yeah, I, I can only do that myself, so hopefully yeah. you will. Well, I'm sure you will. You seem like a great character. <laughs> okay. I'm sure you'll be fine. Nice one. Always be positive. That's it. All right, James, all thanks right. a lot. Thank you. Bye now. Cheers, Torren. If the sale of Torren's watches doesn't cover his debt, there'll be a shortfall. 
Oh, bless him. I thought he was smashing. It's just such a shame that he's, he's not got his watches. I'm gutted for him. I just really hope things pick up for him. I really do. It's not the end of the world. It's, it's a couple of watches, isn't it, at the end of the day? So, basically, um, it's done now, isn't it? So. The watches are no longer Torrens, and the loan may also end up costing the business. Will they be able to sell the collection and cover their losses? It's the end of another working month at the pawn shop. He found a piece of turquoise, cut it, replaced the one that was missing, repaired all the claws so that they don't come out, cleaned it and charged me 100 quid. But I love it so much that I did it. Right, yeah. There you are. If you've got any other interesting stories, just email me, yeah? Yeah, I will. For three customers, big news awaits as they discover how much the items they plan to sell or pawn are worth. Will they get life-changing sums or be left disappointed? Actress Hetty has presented a particularly tricky challenge to the team, a collection of personal mementos, and Lawrence has taken a close interest in her case. Lawrence, you got your overnight bag with you, have you? Don't need one, I'm married man, James. All right, well, let me know how you get on. Uh, I will, will you, do. Will you be gone long, Lawrence? Well, you never know. All right, well, enjoy yourself. Have a good I time. I will do. Should see about Tuesday. <laughs> Hetty wants a loan to help her financially as she waits on a book deal for her autobiography, but she has no idea of her item's worth. Hello. Lawrence. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you've come with tea. What a gentleman. Well, that's the sort of guy I am. You are. Thank you so much. So I suppose you'll be wanting so, to know? Yes. OK. If we start off with the photographs. Yes, OK. okay. Very, very difficult market. So with those, they were so totally specialist that yes. unfortunately nobody would take them on. OK. OK. Well, that's fine. Um, it's not all bad news. No, 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 well, I'm fine, whatever the yeah. outcome is. Well, I must anyway. admit, you know, I did get really behind your case. We have worked hard to I'm get sure, as much I'm as sure possible. Now, the actual sort of high interest was actually the Margot Fontaine mm. ballet. Um, outfit. And we had it verified by Kerry. Mm. And she's estimated, as it is, once we get the provenance and photograph, of about three to four thousand. Now, from that, we could actually give you a loan as soon as we get the authenticity mm. Mm. of about two thousand pounds. How does mm -hmm. that sound? Would that mean good to you? Yeah, I mean, I think um, of all the items that I've got, I, I wouldn't want to part with the other things. Yeah. Whereas with the Fontaine, um, you know, I could. Yes, a bit of extra is always good, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, great. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Oh, welcome. OK. Well, it's lovely to see Hetty again. I mean, she's looking more ravenous than normal in uh, Vivian Westwood today. Love to Take meet you. care, and you. Thank you for all your trouble. Uh, it's not no trouble at all for you. I really think that Lawrence has gone out of his way to help me. It's all a bonus. I'm really happy. She's a lovely lady. Took it very well. I mean, you know, if it'd been me, you'd seen a grown man crying. The pawn shop's customers aren't the only ones waiting on valuations. I like this one the best. Do you? For a man. It's time for Joe to find out whether the shop has made a loss on loan defaulted Torrens watches. She's taking all six to their expert, Nick. Hello, Hiya. Nick. All right. His verdict will determine how much of Torrens' £728 debt can be recouped. That's exactly what you want to see. It's all signed inside. Oh, yeah. Maker's name, mm -hmm. Goldfield. I look brand new in there. Yeah, it's in beautiful condition. It's really clean, Isn't which it is clean? great. Yeah, the quality of the stamp on the back all looks fine. I've never witnessed this before. That's not genuine. Oh! No. There you go. Yeah, the logo is really good on that, and the, even the bracelet's heavy, it looks legit. With a fake in amongst Torrens' lot, 
Will the pawn shop be able to make enough on the sale of the rest of the watches to cover the loss? It's time to relay the news to James. So, there's some good news and there's some bad news. What do you want first? Well, the good news. The good news is Nick wants possibly one of them, but that's only a possible. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> no. The bad news is one of them's a fake. Oh, bottoms. Yeah. A fake? One of the tags. Oh, all right. Yeah, there were three tags and one of them's a fake. OK, I don't like that. So we got the watches valued at 915 minus the cost of the repairs, brings them down to 865 and then he owes about once it. we've sold them, seven. what our costs involved have come to, yeah. it might break even. Yeah, so no good anyway, basically. Housewife Georgina is also anxiously waiting for news. She plans to sell a five-carat diamond ring belonging to her mum. Excited to know now. Excited to know what, what the ring's going to be worth. The proceeds will be split with her two sisters. If the ring was worth roughly 45000 that would be amazing for me and my two sisters. That would be great. Hello. Hello. Is that Georgina? Yes, yeah, speaking. It's Florence. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm all right. How have you been feeling this week? I excited. I'm, I'm just really excited to know now. Anxious about it all. Yes, but looking forward to knowing. I mean, it's a really beautiful style. It really is. Uh, I know you were looking for a figure of between 35 and 45, weren't you? Yes, that, I mean, that would be great, so yes. If you landed on the 45, you'd be happy, wouldn't you? Yes, definitely, yes. Yeah, that, that would be amazing. For a three, yes, that would be great. We don't, is it good news? Right, we had a look at it. Um, and we are prepared to buy it from you for 60,000. 60,000. So that's 20,000 each. Nice round figure. Yes. Well, I'm shaking. I can't believe it. 20,000 each. Thank Have you. Have a good afternoon. Okay, thank and you. a big gin and tonic. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. 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 Carl? Yeah? They've just valued it. Go on. 60,000. Really? 20,000 each. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's great news, isn't it? I'm shocked with that figure, really. The money can be in the bank tomorrow. <laughs> Just like that. Hurt me days. <laughs> <laughs> James is due to let client Paul know what he is prepared to loan against the value of his original painting. But at the 11th hour, art expert Ben calls an urgent meeting. We spoke to Kerry. She yeah. came down, had a look. Um, the exciting news is she wants to do a unique edition print of it. What does that mean in terms of the value? It's the best thing that the client could hope for. When she does a unique edition print, they go into galleries. It's normally 100 done, 150 done, and everyone starts asking about the original. It becomes uh, the great exposure, really, for right. the piece. When artists produce limited edition prints of their works, the increased exposure can cause the value of the original to triple. The owner's going to be happy as Larry when he is that. What he does now, I don't know, you need to have a conversation with him whether yeah. he decides to loan against it now. You'd be mad to sell it before the unique edition actually comes out. OK, mate. Thanks for popping in. See you later, Ben. Cheers, Cheers mate. Thank you. Thanks. See you. Well, from my point of view, it's the best bit of news um, I've had all day. It's not very often that that happens. I mean, it's going to make a the world of difference when it comes to the loan offer. Awaiting James's call, the painting's owners, Jackie and Paul. Paul was out of work for 18 months, so the news can't come soon enough. I'm hoping he's going to offer me 40,000. I'm hoping. Hello. Hi. It's James here from Prestige. How are you? Hi, James. Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, not bad, mate. Well, look, I've got some news for you. Um, okay. I think the initial um, figures might have been a little bit disappointing. Around the 30 grand mark for the piece, maybe a touch more. Uh, as a loan, we could potentially offer 20 grand, or if you wanted to sell the piece, we would buy it outright for around the 25 grand mark. I know you were quite attached to the piece. Yeah. I don't know how you feel about those numbers. I don't think they're going to work for us, James, no, to be honest. Well, look, I've got some much better news than that, which uh, right. I don't mind telling you about, is that we've actually spoke to Kerry herself. She's actually going to do a limited edition print 
combat actual is piece, she? So, which means the artwork would be worth a lot lot more money it means that the item will be worth 90 grand would it yeah 90 grand plus so possibly over 100 grand wow uh, ben's confirmed that to me so um, oh, that's on that fantastic. Basis, we could potentially offer you more money as a loan or, or buy it potentially off off of you now but i think yeah. you'd be wise to keep hold of it keep hold of it for now until she does yeah, james that's fantastic news i think i'll take your advice james then. we'll wait and um uh, for kerry to do the limited editions and go from there and um Wow, that is, uh, that's fantastic that's news. That's even, news. That's, that is, that's even better news, James. I don't think you'll have any problems getting 90 grand for that piece. Fantastic. Do you know, that's the best news I've ever, ever had. James, okay, that's mate. fantastic. Cheers. See you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. But listen to this, Jack. Kerry has informed James she's going to do a limited edition of that in May that will make the painting worth 90 to £100,000. That's even better news. Oh, God. <laughs> God. Mm. Very surprised. I couldn't wish for better news than that. We have uh, right down to our last penny we're in the, in the bank account. Me spent the whole lot. Wow. <laughs> what an investment, <laughs> eh? Paul and Jackie now have the option of safely pawning their painting, knowing the value will increase over the coming months. I don't show my emotions much, I tend to hide them, but I was getting to a point where, um, you know, it was getting to me, really. And that is, that's a godsend. That is uh, a big relief. That's brilliant. Oh, fantastic. Mwah.